Hey everybody, my name is Grimace, you're watching Hike California. In this channel, I talk about hiking, backpacking, backpacking gear in the state of California. If those things interest you, click that subscribe button, click that notification bell. I've got a really great trip planned in a couple of weeks with some friends, and I had uh, one of them come up to me with a very interesting proposition. So on these group trips, I tend to outfit everybody, right? Because I have all of this equipment, and I can just sort of like loan it to people. But I have a good friend who has done a couple of trips. He knows that he likes backpacking. He doesn't want to keep borrowing equipment because he wants to do his own trips. And he came to me and he asked, like, hey, listen, would you help me put together a kit for under $1,000? Now, the first thing I did is I came right here to YouTube and I looked up, like, backpacking gear under $500 or under $600. And there's some really great videos. But what the problem I ran into is... There just started to be too many compromises, too many things that I didn't really feel like the quality was quite up to what I wanted for my friend or what I would want if I was in the backcountry. And so I started digging a little bit deeper and I came up with a plan. He had a budget of $1,000. So what I did was I sort of challenged myself to come up with a set of backpacking gear that A, cost under $1,000 and B, came in at an ultra light weight under 10 pounds. So this is that video and I just wanted to kind of show you what I'm doing. There's definitely different ways you could go with this. Um, it's pretty light on creature comforts, I'm not going to lie, but it is a pretty good system, I think, for especially for an ultralight base weight coming, under, coming in under $1,000. So I was pretty pleased with what I was able to find, and now let's get to it. So obviously the first thing you got to start with thinking about is what am I going to wear? And the first thing that we found was the base layer, a long sleeve base layer. He wanted a long sleeve base layer. This has got to be something that's going to wick sweat. Um, I don't love this color, but it happened to be the cheapest color. Um, but this is a Hanes Cool Dry t-shirt, a uh, long sleeve t-shirt. So this comes in at about $15, 6.2 ounces. Um, not that we're counting weight for our clothing, but you know, still pretty light, very useful. I like the shirt. Next up are underpants. Um, I just went with the tried and true ex officio give and go mesh boxers. On the rare occasions when I wear boxer shorts on the trail, if I'm not wearing uh, running shorts with a liner, this is what I wear. It comes in at about $19 a pack, three ounces, super breathable. Everything goes into its place, everything fits into its place. And um, just a really great, very comfortable uh, boxer. I didn't feel any need to switch anything up here. Next up is he wanted to wear shorts. He didn't want to wear pants. So I did a little bit of digging and there are definitely a lot of ways you can go here, but I wanted to get something that gave him some pretty good coverage, but then also um, was quick drying. And so what I found are these, they're called Little Donkey Cargo Shorts, Quick Dry Cargo Shorts. And they are exactly what it sounds like. They have the little cargo pockets, but uh, I was pretty, pretty impressed by these. So again, maybe something that I would even wear. Moving on, we would obviously needed to get him some socks, and so I found a three-pack of Merrill Quarter Cushion hiking socks. Um, for the entire thing, it was like $14, so each pair was something like $4.80. They come in at 2.5 ounces, and um, I got a three-pack. So this is one pair, and we'll get to the, another of the three pair later when we talk about um, spare socks. But for now, this is the Merrill Quarter Cushion uh, so hiking sock and I also wanted to get him a, a gator a neck gator that he could kind of play with and as he needed or if it was cool outside and he needed a little bit of extra warmth and I found this fleece uh, they call it a neck warmer but this fleece gator by cat and you may be hearing that and thinking oh well that's gonna be too warm for hiking and you're you may be right it's definitely not uh, it's not a buff it's not that cool material it is a, a fleece but I think that this could be really versatile and really useful. I think, A, it's going to keep the sun off of you, um, you know, for sure. And then also you can use it if it does get cooler, if you're sitting around in camp and it's a little cooler. So it's going to take you into shoulder season. You can use this as a towel. You can use this as a lot of different things, as a pot, you know, to pick up your pot. So I think overall, um, I like this. It's got this cool little, like, diamond plate pattern, which I like. But, um, you know, maybe you'll find something a little bit lighter. Uh, as far as material goes, but I really liked this, so this is what we picked. I don't have them on me, 
um, because I wear prescription sunglasses, so I didn't order them. But I got some, uh, I chose for him some Gooder uh, running sunglasses. They cost just $19. They're half an ounce. Super useful, super versatile. Um, I think there's really not much you can do to go wrong there. Obviously, you can just pick up some gas station sunglasses and be just fine. Um, but in the interest of like making this like things that we could track the cost of, I chose those just so we had them. And then also on his feet, we needed some shoes. And so I found these Columbia Pivot hiking shoes. These things came in at $65. They're 27 ounces for the for the two of them, so under two pounds. Um, I, I just, again, I really like, th this is a, a pretty aggressive tread. I feel like you would have a lot of protection. First of all, this is a really solid shoe. Um, but they're not too lightweight and it's got the mesh, so it's going to be breathable. It says waterproof, so, you know, hopefully it breathes pretty well, but I, I just have a good feeling. I like Columbia, um, for everything else. I imagine their shoes are great. So this is what we ended up with. Finally, luckily I didn't have to buy any because I already had Cascade Mountain Tech carbon fiber trekking poles. They come in at just 7.8 ounces, but then also, and we'll talk about this in a second, these are going to serve as the primary support for his shelter. Next up, of course, is the pack. And this is the Gregory Stout 45. This is a full frame pack. Um, it's got the suspension on the back to kind of give you airflow and to keep the, get the pack off of your back. It's gonna be really um, cushioned right here. It's got a foam cushioning, a uh, foam pad in here. Uh, really built up shoulder straps with, with some uh, things to attach, you know, if you want to take a GPS or, or attach your phone or whatever, uh, camera, you know, anything you want to sort of daisy chain on here. Um, it's great. It's got a lot of, of room for that. It's got nice big hip belts if you want to carry snacks or whatever you want to carry inside of your hip belts. It comes with a uh, water, uh, with a, a pack liner to put over it in case of rain. It has a head a portion of brain that looks removable. I haven't tried to take it off yet, but it looks removable. This thing comes in right over two pounds. It's like 42.6 ounces. And it's definitely a little overkill for what I would need. I know he likes a full backpack with like the frame and everything, um, which is great. But what I love about this is it just set us back $120. And this has got everything you need. It's got really wide side pockets. It's got a huge front pocket. Um, it's got, like I said, all the ventilation, all the padding up here. It's got a water bladder um, pocket if that's something that, that you want to use. Uh, so you can have a hydration packet in there. This is a really built up, really good. I mean, the seams are really good. I don't know if you can see that, but everything is just really well constructed. And at $120, that's not bad. So I had to pull the trigger on this one. And one thing that I was not able to get because it was on back order that I would use is the uh, Thermarest Ridge Light, I'm sorry, Ridge Rest, Thermarest Ridge Rest So Light sleeping pad. I used this um, Z Light just as a, a filler because I had it, but this is not actually the pad that I would use. I would use a Ridge Rest. Now those tend to be disappear during the summer uh, during the main primary backpacking season. So if this is something you're interested in, you might want to check in the shoulder, deep shoulder seasons or even in winter. So just to kind of move through the pack uh, on my side pockets, the way I've got it organized, I didn't put a lot of thought into how to organize this because it's not, it's not for me. But um, I would probably just have two one liter smart water bottles. That's how I would carry my water. I would not do a hydration pack, especially for backpacking. I just think Number one, I, I like to see how much water I have so that I don't, I'm not just drinking blindly and then suddenly I don't have any. And number two, I, I just am always worried about failure of water bladders because if something in your pack breaks and leaks water, you're screwed. Your trip is over. Um, like there is, there, it's very hard to bounce back from that. Not, I mean, number one, because everything is wet. But then number two, because that can obviously happen if it's raining, but number two, now you have no way to carry water. So I like to have just a one liter smart water bottle. Your water filter, if you have one, can thread right on top. Like it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, very easy and very cheap and very light. You're going to get 
maybe two dollars to get one of these and it's going to come in at about a buck forty uh, i only have one on hand now but i would carry two just to have the additional capacity moving on um this is not how i would pack this again so because i wouldn't bring actually the the packaging with this but this is aquamira this is what i would do if i were my buddy i would buy these aquamira tablets so this is there are two i don't know if you know aquamira but they're basically two bottles of solution you put them together mix them up and that's how you get it and it's got a shelf life but um I would pre-mix some of this into just a little dropper bottle. So the droplets are gonna set you back about 15 bucks. The bottle is gonna be another dollar. Altogether, they're gonna come in around three ounces, but obviously you won't need to actually bring these bottles. So you just need this. And it'll have the, the, the mixture in it. You'll drop it in your water. You'll swig it around. You'll wait as long as you need to wait. And then your water safe to drink. So that's how I would do it. I would just bring a little dropper bottle full of aqua, Aquamira. Over on the other side, I've essentially got all of my ditties. This is not an ideal way to carry anything, but I just wanted to keep everything very simple. So I just put everything in a one quart Ziploc bag. So what I've got in here is a Deuce of Spades trout, 0.6 ounces. It comes in under $20. Super versatile. You could also hang it off of your pack. It's got, it does have a, uh, you can put a carabiner on there if you really wanted to. A lot of people think it's weird to put it with your other ditties, but I feel like it's just digging the hole. You're not actually pooping on it, so it shouldn't be dirty, but I don't know. Your mileage may vary. And then in here, I would like to keep, uh, I would probably just use a backwater bidet. So this is the Kulo Clean. This costs about 10 bucks. It's about 0.6 ounces. It weighs almost nothing. You screw it onto the top of a water bottle. You, sh you shoot it down to irrigate after you do your business and then you're done. Moving through here, I would just carry some Dr. Bronner's in a little bottle like this. I wouldn't bring specific toothpaste. You could, you could just bring any travel toothpaste. I would probably use Dr. Bronner's. As long as that doesn't we weird you out, this is what I would use for toothpaste. And then also that way you have soap. It's gonna set you back about two and a half dollars. It's gonna be about one ounce. It's not really much to worry about. My Lightsmith thumbprint toothbrush that I love so much with the wide handle that you can get a good grip on, the cap, this is what I would use. Uh, you could, again, just find any cheap toothbrush, shave it down so that it's much it's shorter and you could probably do just as well, but I like this. But also bring sunblock. If you know me, you know I hate sunblock, but I think for this trip, especially because I didn't give him a hat, I just think like in general, sunblock is probably a good idea. Most people should carry it. I should carry it, I just don't. Um, very inexpensive. I got this in a four pack off of Amazon for like six bucks. Very inexpensive. It's uh, half half an ounce. Uh, it's nothing and obviously it's sunblock. You need sunblock. Moving on down into here, Swiss Army Victorinox this is about a $20 knife. It's got everything you need it to do. Super lightweight. Uh, I'm gonna have a lighter pack down below too. So if you wanna take a look at this stuff, I'll also have links in the lighter pack. I do not have an Amazon affiliate account. So assuming that you're seeing this when I post it, not like three years from now when I would probably have one, but I do not get any money from anything you order off of this list. Um, I'm just trying to, as I said, it was a challenge for me, so I'm just sharing my results because I thought it was a lot of fun. I would also have my mini big lighter. You can get this for like a dollar at any gas station in America. Um, it's just good to have fire. It weighs less than half an ounce. You should have a mini big lighter. You should probably have two. I have one for this kit. And then finally, I just have earplugs. I bought, I found a huge, um, huge box of them to where it works out where there's like 40 cents per pair of earplugs. They weigh nothing. They weigh 0.2 ounces. It just, you know, it helps if there's someone snoring nearby. It helps if you get spooked by animals at night. If you hear, you know, the sound of animals spooks you. Carry some earplugs. Super beneficial to help you get sleeping. And I, I, I highly recommend them, on, especially on a trip like this, where it's gonna be, you know, maybe you're living at a little bit of your comfort level. And so just have something that's gonna help you some back get away from everything also in this pocket floating free i do not have them in a steak bag but i have six msr mini groundhog steaks 
I would probably just keep these loose. Maybe I would wrap them in the tent itself. They weigh less than one and a half ounces each. Uh, you get three in a pack for about 10 bucks. You get six of them here, you're good to go. The only thing I put in the front pocket for this is my rain jacket. And all I'm bringing is Frog Togs, the Frog Togs Ultralight Rain Jacket. This thing is enormous, enormous. So it can actually go over your pack. So you can use it also as sort of a pack uh, uh, cover. So I actually jettisoned the pack cover that comes with this pack, thinking that I would use this over it if, if anything came up. So this is in the front pocket, just in case it gets wet, that way it can breathe or it can dry and not affect anything else. So that's all I've got in the front pocket. Moving into the pack itself, we are going to start with just right on top for no good reason. Um, I just, I needed to get him a first aid kit. I purchased one of these, uh, the Adventure Medical Kits uh, Ultralight Watertight Medical Kit 0.7, uh, just so that I would have a medical kit. This is not what I would carry. I tend to just maybe go to CVS and get the pills that I need, the ibuprofen, some bandages, some rock tape, whatever, and put it in a Ziploc bag. But if you just want a plug and play medical kit that can kind of sit in your pack just in case there's an emergency, this thing's as good as any. Uh, it's a little bit overkill for most trips, but most people like that peace of mind. So I got him this. For food storage, I just brought two gallon Ziploc freezer bags. So these are watertight. Um, these Ziploc bags are great. I would have one for food for the day and one for food for following days. You could also just carry your snacks in your hip belt pocket and use one of these for trash. But again, super inexpensive, super light, very versatile, and you can get a lot of use out of these. For an insulating layer for when it's cold outside, I chose a down jacket. If I were to do this again, I might consider a synthetic for a couple of reasons. No, number one, it tends to be cheaper. And then number two, I feel like a lot of the problem, a lot of the challenge with this particular kit is gonna be managing moisture. And so a synthetic jacket is going to retain its heating capabilities when a down jacket wouldn't. So if you're wearing it as an extra layer while hiking, or even if it's, there's just a little bit of water, I think um, it might be better to have a synthetic in this instance. But I brought, a, I chose a down coat. This is from a company called Bakery. They have a lot of different names on um, Amazon and they're all the same company. Like actually, I, when I ordered it, it was called Bakery, but on the actual tag it says Less Smart, L-E-S-M-A-R-T. This is a down jacket, pretty good warmth to weight ratio. I was actually pretty surprised by it. I did not get a hooded jacket because I have a beanie, which we'll talk about in a second, but this is what I chose. It packs down super tight. Um, it accomplishes a lot of what you need a down jacket to accomplish and it's going to be it's going to be a little tiny bit heavier than something like a Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer but for the cost savings it's really good and it packs down really small. This thing only costs about 40 bucks and it only weighs about 11 ounces. So warmth to weight to cost, I feel really good about this choice. So now on to easily my least favorite part of this system and that's the cook kit, cook and mess kit. So when I got all the systems in place, I ended up a little bit disappointed. But so let me first walk you through what I got. Number one is this UCO Outdoors um, three-in-one spork spoon, knife, and, and, and fork set. So it's a fork on this side, a little serrated blade to act as a knife and a spoon. Really small, as you can see. We'll get back to that. Um, and then I also have a BRS 3000 titanium stove. It's just super small, super light. It's going to get the job done. It's not going to boil water as fast as many other stoves, but just bang for the buck. This thing is incredible. And there's a reason it is so popular. It comes in under $20 and it even comes in under one ounce. So you can't really beat it. Next up, any Isopro container. Um, that you can find you can get you can usually find one that's cheap somewhere uh, This happens to be the one I bought because I ran out of fuel on a trip And I had to stop at a general store and this is what they had so 
whatever your ISO Pro of choice is, it's gonna fit in here. And then there's the pot. The pot I chose is Amusa, I-M-U-S-A, um, 0.7 quart pot. It's got a little handle on it. I hate this little handle. It doesn't have a lid. I wish it had a lid. So this is something that, there are a few things you could do here. You could use this handle and hang it off of your pack. That's probably a smarter way to go. But because it has this handle, it makes it a very weird shape. And because it has uh, no lid, it's very difficult to store things inside of it. And because this spork is, it's, it's great, but it doesn't pack down to the size of the pot. It's bigger and it's no, and there's no, it's rigid. There's no flexibility here. So what I did to kind of keep this all together is I grabbed a stuff sack. Now, I don't know if you're like me, you've got just dozens of stuff sacks laying around because I take everything out of its sack for the most part. So I have this mesh stuff sack that came with a mess kit that I used some time ago. And I figured I would put it in there because then it could drain water. Like when I clean, after I clean it, you know, it's wet and I, I pack it at the end of the day, uh, mesh is going to let it drain and let it breathe. The problem is, as you may already be imagining, this thing. It just doesn't, there's no good way to like get it in here. And what is particularly bad about it is that it's got a fork, so it's very stabby. So anything that it's poking out of, I'm just worried that it's gonna like cut um, or puncture something that it shouldn't puncture. Luckily, I don't have an inflatable pad. I use, I'm, I have a, self, a closed cell phone pad with this. So I think the damage it can do is minimal, but if it gets into my down jacket, it's something, I, it's just too, it's too unpredictable. So if I were to do this again, I would probably either A, look for a pot that has a lid to keep everything sort of confined, but more importantly, I think that I would look for a foldable spork. So in my list below, in my notes below, I'm gonna put a link to an MSR foldable spork that's only $4 and comes in at like, like an eighth of an ounce. So I think that's what I would choose other than this, rather than this. So it's just something to keep in mind. This is kind of, this was kind of a disappointment. I like the spork. I'm carrying it actually in my regular backpacking kit sometimes, and I'm just putting it in my food bag. So that might be a way to go. I don't know. It's just, I'm a little disappointed. Moving down, a uh, spare pair of socks. So I talked earlier about, I got a three pair of these Merrill quarter cushion socks. This is the second of the three pairs. The third pair stays at home. I also got a champion knit beanie. Um, again, I didn't want to like compromise too much on on quality. Champion's a great company. They make great products. This is a really warm beanie, actually. It only costs about $11, and it comes in about two ounces, and it's very warm. It obviously packs down really small. It's just a beanie. So I don't know. I kind of like it. I feel like I've had a challenge finding beanies in general that I like, and this one seems to do the trick. So I'm glad I did this challenge. If no, for no other reason than I got a good beanie out of it. Also in the pack, I have this Energizer 260 lumen headlamp. This is great. It's just a really inexpensive headlamp, but again, it's Energizer. So I trust the quality. It's a 260 lumens. It's got a red light feature. It's a company I trust, a company I love. It takes two batteries, and it came in about $14.5 and only weighs three ounces. So it's pretty good. You could, if you wanted to put some work into this, you could probably modify it so that you're using a shock cord and get rid of this band and make it even more lightweight. Um, but even at sort of its packed weight, it's pretty good. So, uh, And again, it's Energizer, so there it is. Moving farther down is the tent that I chose. So this is where I see a lot of people, I don't wanna say go wrong because they have different priorities than I do, but I do not want to compromise on a shelter. I don't want to, I don't want a shelter that's going to fail that I don't trust. So I went with the Six Moon Designs Lunar Solo Tent. This is a premium backpacking tent. This is a tent that people through hike long distance trails with. It is a trekking pole tent, so it does not have its own stakes. Um, 
This is a very good tent. You can get it for under $250 and it weighs less than two pounds. So this actually checks all the boxes for me. It's one of the more expensive items in the pack. It's one of the more luxurious items in the, in the kit, but I really like it. And I think that it fits marvelously with this setup. And again, at night when you're sleeping, it's not a place you typically want to compromise. As I mentioned, my friend has backpacked, but for him, one of his creature comforts is he didn't want to do a tarp. He didn't want a cowboy camp. He absolutely wanted an enclosed shelter. So I think this ticks off all the boxes for him. If you don't want to carry trekking poles, you can actually buy carbon fiber poles from Six Moon Designs to set this up. Um, my buddy's sort of debating what he, whether he wants to do that or not, but it's a great shelter. You're not going to go wrong. Moving farther in, all I have for waterproofing is just the trash compactor bag. Super inexpensive, super easy to find. Um, you know, you buy a big pack of them. So per unit, it costs like, I don't know, 10 cents, something like that. It's insanely light. It's great. It just keeps water out. It's built for trash compactors, which are obviously wet and full of water. So it's built to waterproof things. And as we move into the waterproof sack, um, we have quilt. So this is, I've talked about budget backpacking quilts. This is the winner of that video. So if you want to go back and watch the video, I'll put the link up here. And this is the Hammock Gear Economy Burrow 30 degree quilt. This thing is awesome. It's rated down to 30 degrees. It costs under $200. I got it for $195. You can also get it on sale if you're very patient. And it weighs about 22 ounces. And this thing, it just accomplishes what you need it to accomplish. It's a great backpacking quilt. You're not suffering quality, uh, any quality loss. This is a great quilt made in the USA, which I like. And you just can't go wrong with this guy. Last but not least is a pillow. This is a Marchway ultralight pillow, inflatable pillow. This thing is huge. Look how big it is. It's still also, it decides it's still only three and a half ounces and it cost about $11. So it's got a valve to blow it up, a valve to let it go, you know, let the air go. And it's got like little nubs on the bottom. So it stays in place pretty well compared to a lot of inflatable pillows. It's very similar to the Sea to Summit Eros pillow that everyone, myself included, carries uh, in that it's got a slicker sort of top, uh, uh, like a cushion sort of a top. You could put a buff over it if you really wanted to or the neck gaiter if you really wanted to. I was really surprised to find a pillow this nice at this price point. So I think that this is a good find, like a big win. So this is a uh, Marchway ultralight inflatable pillow. So there you have it. That is an ultralight under 10 pound backpacking kit for under a thousand dollars. So again, this is a specific niche of people who know that they like the activity, they know they like the hobby, um, but they need to build a kit relatively quickly. My, with my friend, he just doesn't have time to wait on long lead times to get everything in to find, you know, just the right uh, quilt and just the right shelter and he'll do that work eventually but he just needs something where he can just get in and get out relatively quickly everything's available and he can just get going so this is sort of a one-stop shop and it, again it's going to cost under a thousand dollars to get started he's not going to have to upgrade a lot of these things everything's pretty good quality um, and so you know I think it's a really good setup are there some tweaks you can make? Absolutely. Are there some changes you can make? Absolutely. And I tell you what, I would love it if you would put those notes in the comments below because I would love to learn from you too. But right now I'm looking at this as like mission accomplished. We got under $1,000, we got under 10 pounds, and I feel really good about the quality of this setup also. So if you got value out of this video, I would love it if you would click that thumbs up button. And hey, let's do this again sometime.